Come on, just give him a few more seconds of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, that's it, a few more seconds. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Bless your holy name, God. Bless your holy name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you thank him. Come on, you thank him. Bless your high name, God. Bless you for your faithfulness, God. Bless you for your mercy. Bless you for your grace, God. Come on, that's it. Thank him today. Come on, bless him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Glory. We want to thank you. 
We just came to thank you. We just came to thank you. If you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you've already worked out. We thank you for what you've already healed. We thank you for the way out. We thank you for a way in. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your mercy. Jesus, we lift your name up today. We lift your name up today. Heaven wants to hear your name called. Jesus, you're our strong tower. Jesus, you're our healer today. Jesus, you're our way maker. Jesus, you're everything we need. Jesus, there's power in your name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, glory. 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 We came to bless you. We came to bless you. We came to bless you. I don't know about nobody else, but I came to bless you. I came to thank you. I came to glorify you. Hallelujah. For your goodness and your mercy. For your loving kindness. Hallelujah. For your mercy. Let's renew day by day. Thank you for new mercy. Thank you for new grace. Thank you for a new experience. Thank you for a new glory. Thank you for a fresh wind. Thank you for a new anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We bless you. We bless you. No other God beside 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 you. Hallelujah. Down in my soul today. Hallelujah. My soul praise you. My spirit magnify you. My spirit give you glory. My spirit cries out to you. My spirit rejoice in you. My spirit craves after your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. I may be tired in my body. But my spirit is taking wings in you. I glorify you. For when I'm weak, you're strong. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your supernatural strength. Thank you for the praise. Thank you for the praise. Thank you for strength to praise you. Thank you for strength to glorify you. Thank you for strength to magnify you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 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 Oh, just a few more seconds. A few more seconds. Give me praise. Come out 30 more seconds. Open up your mouth and give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
He's in the room today. His presence is here. He wants glory. He wants us to magnify him. He wants us to glorify him. Come on, open up your mouth for 60 more seconds and give it all you got because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank him in advance for it. Thank him in advance for the victory. 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 Oh, come on, somebody. Thank him in advance for the victory. Thank you in advance for the victory. Thank you in advance for the victory. Thank you before time for the victory. Oh, God. Thank you before I see it. Thank you before I see it. I thank you before I see it. Thank you before I possess it. You've already spoken it, therefore it's mine. Oh, come on, somebody in thinking. He's already spoken it. Therefore it is mine. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, you may be seated in his presence. My soul loving today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, break forth in the praise. He's doing something in the atmosphere today. explain it to you I can't explain it to you but this one thing I can tell you I just heard the Holy Ghost say to me that this praise has come from Africa you'll understand it better by and by but come on and praise him he's doing something there's a different anointing in here there's a different level in here there's a different realm in here it's the victory realm in spite of your situation it's the victory praise in spite of what the enemy has done it's the praise of victory come out and praise him today Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. He's working it out in the praise. He's working it out in the praise. Don't try to tell him about it. He said, I'm working it out in the praise. As you praise me, I'm fixing it. As you praise me, I'm working it out. As you praise me, I'm giving you a breakthrough. As you praise me, I'm releasing the answer. Your victory is in your praise today. Your victory is in your praise. Not in your asking, but your praise. Your breakthrough is in the praise. What you need is in the praise. What you want him to release is in the praise. What you gotta have is in the praise.
come on, I hear the Holy Ghost say one more minute. One more minute. And the enemy got to take his hands off. One more minute. And the devil got to stop in his tracks. One more minute. And every shackle got to come off. One more minute. And the spirit of oppression is broken. Oh, break it off of your family. With your praise today. Break it off of your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Put him back in his place. Put him back on the throne.
Thank you, Jesus. God, I give you the praise. God, I give you the glory. You so magnify you. I sing for joy at the works of thy hand. Forever I praise you. Just begin to worship him. Forever I praise you. Forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Woo! Come on. Come on, church. Woo! Come on, don't miss this experience. Come on, don't miss this experience. Come on, don't miss this experience. Come on, just begin to praise him and worship him. Come on. Come on, church, begin to praise him and worship him. That's it, worship him. That's it, worship him. That's it, tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you adore him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you may be seated in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah to his name. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah to his name. You're so faithful, God. You're faithful, God. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. while you're worshiping. Just stay right there in that worship mode, but while you're worshiping. Ezekiel, the 12th chapter, I'm gonna read a scripture, don't move. I just don't want the presence of the Lord to just be disturbed, but. Ezekiel, the 12th chapter. The scripture jumped out at me on the plane, flying in from Chicago last night. The 21st verse says, and the, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in the land of Israel saying, the days drag on and every vision comes to nothing and is not fulfilled? Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will put an end to this proverb and they shall use it no more as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, the days are at hand and the fulfillment of every vision. 
For there shall be no more any false, empty and fruitless visions or flattering divination in the house of Israel. For I am the Lord. I will speak and the word that I shall speak shall be performed. Come to pass. And it shall be no more delayed or prolonged. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in your days, O rebellious house, I will speak the word and will perform it, says the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that Ezekiel sees is for many days to come. And he prophesies of the times that are far off. Therefore, say to them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be deferred anymore, but the word which I have spoken shall be performed, says the Lord God. Oh, you ought to worship him today. It shall be performed. No more delayed. Oh, no more prolonged. But the word that I have spoken in your spirit, it shall be performed. Oh, somebody ought to magnify him. Somebody ought to magnify him. Somebody ought to magnify him. Just touch three people around you and said, Thus saith the Lord, it shall be performed. Touch three more people and say, No more delays. Tell three more people, Thus saith the Lord. It shall be performed. Come on and bless it. Touch three more people and say, It shall come to pass. Come on now, touch three more people and say, It wasn't a false vision. No more delays. No more delays. Thus saith the Lord. It shall be performed. It shall come to pass. I just keep hearing the Lord said, tell them I will put an end to this proverb. Today the proverb ends. Today the proverb ends that says, it ain't gonna come to pass. Thus said the Lord, I will speak and I shall perform it. Oh, somebody needs to magnify it.
My God. You've given me Daniel the sixth chapter and I was reading it in Africa. As we stay right there, prepare to leave today. He had given me Daniel the sixth chapter and he was talking about in this chapter how In the third verse, he talked about, and you can read it when you get home. It says, because an excellent spirit was in Daniel, the king thought to set him, amplified Bible said, over the whole realm. The prophetic translation is this an excellent spirit was within him, within us, and then God chooses to set us over the realms. Says that Daniel offered his petition three times a day, and he prayed. He was a prayer warrior. And when the petition went out, that nobody else was to pray to any other God but the gods that the king had petitioned for. The Bible said that when Daniel heard the decree, he went to his window and opened it up and he prayed anyhow. And he prayed so that the person that brought the decree could hear him still praying after he was told not to pray. The fourth verse is what really struck me. It says, for he was faithful. Nor was there any error of fault found in him. The part that sticks out really strong to me. He was faithful. And that's what the essence of what God desires to do in us depends upon. It hinges on our faithfulness. I said some time ago, I don't even remember if I've said it here, but I remember mentioning it in the Megafest when I lost my voice and I couldn't shout, and I couldn't use my voice. And the Lord had commissioned me to do the 5 a.m. prayer in New York. And the devil said, you might as well not go, just rest your body, because you can't pray anyway. But the Lord kept bringing to my spirit that a faithful man abounds with blessings. A faithful man. Not a talented man, not a gifted man. But if God can find you being consistent in what he has told you to do, that get God's attention more than anything else. Because he's looking for people whose fruit will remain. It is easier to get God's attention. If he told you to clap your hands three times a day. And you remain consistent in that. Then if he asks you to preach a one time message. Because he wants to know that he can depend on you for an assignment. We prayed about it and we asked the Lord. We went over to 
Africa and, and it was an awesome experience that I shall never in 150 lifetimes forget. I'll never forget it. And on the way back, <clears throat> started out yesterday, flying 14 hours. And in my mind, my body said, you're so tired, you can't stand up. And the Lord brought it back to me again. A faithful man. Yeah. Shall abide in this. Didn't get to bed until about two o'clock this morning after flying 14 hours on the plane coming back from, we went to Kenya and from Kenya I had to preach in London. So I had to go from Kenya to London and I had to preach three days in London at a very large conference there. And I got them preaching on Sunday, got on a plane on Monday and flew all day, flew into Chicago, nine and a half hours on the first flight, and then flew from Chicago. And when I got to Chicago, I was like, maybe I should just go home because I'm so tired, I'm shaking. But I kept hearing it, a faithful man. Shall abound the blessings. Going to be found doing and being where he told me to be. Africa was the most life-changing experience I think all of us or any of us would ever have. And the thing that drove me the most today is that I want to get up out of the bed and I just, I felt so, so weary till I had to hold on to go to the bathroom. And my mind went back to looking at over 750,000 people. People who had walked for three days who slept on the ground in the park because they came to hear a word from God. I, I, I said earlier, before I left going to Africa, and I was preaching this here, and I said, we're entering into a realm. How many remember me saying, we're entering into the realm of it ain't never happened before. How many remember that? And we get to Kenya and the people in parliament came. I think the first day we were there, we were supposed to, well, there was an attempt made to do a woman on the front line in Africa at a building that they had there that seats 6,000 people and they were able to rearrange the chairs and get 10,000 people into the building and it was going to be women on the front line but as they have it the people begin to burst the doors down and by the time they got outside with no exaggeration there was 20,000 plus women outside of the building and so since they did not have speakers Outside, they had to cancel that meeting because <clears throat> they said if they had brought me in the building and I started preaching because the women outside couldn't hear, they would have just started pressing past because they had already broke two glass doors because the people said 
no more people can come in. And they was like, no, we don't think so. So they broke the glass and was coming through the glass. So they didn't want me to come into a situation like that because it was very dangerous. So then they told the people on Wednesday, then uh, on Thursday was the woman on the front line. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was going to be preaching in the park. And um, so the people just started leaving from the building and walking to the park. And uh, by the time we ended up with people walking to the park, um, everybody in Kenya said that out of all the years that they've been in Kenya, out of all the evangelists that have come to Kenya, never in the history of Kenya had that ever been that many people drawn to a single meeting. And when they said these words, this has never happened before. You know I lost it. It was, it was so tremendous until they had to call the military army in to control the crowds. And where my hotel room was, you had to walk down that block to get to the park. And people here would tell you, they would come from the park singing to the point that they stopped all the traffic the people were just crowded out in front of the hotel and would not move. And they just kept singing this song that I sang, my life will never be the same. And just stopping traffic and stop. It was, it was something that you would have had to been there. Am I right, Sister Jones? To see it. Now let me tell you how phenomenal that was because when I say I got to Kenya and at the end of the message I said I was taken back to America that God had done something unusually awesome in my ministry and in the anointing and when I came in here today and you all were praising and praising and praising and praising and praising and praising well one of the African rules that the Holy Ghost shouted out to the Africans that the African rule is you are to praise God and not stop until I tell you and so when it happened in here, that's why I kind of had to pull myself together because it was like the anointing that was in Africa to keep praising and praising and praising. It was my sign that I had brought the African anointing back to America. Oh, you ought to bless God. Oh, you wait until I get some strength on me. You wait until the Lord. Oh my God. When you see, if you ever in your life get an opportunity to see 750,000 people go into just an unusual, non-stop praise like I, I just, and I said to those people, I said, this is the real joy of the Lord. Because when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, you sleep in a hut with no running water, you walk three days to come to a meeting, and you can't stop praising God, and you got AIDS in your body, and you can't stop praising God, that's the real joy of the Lord. That's a praise that the world didn't give you and the world can't take away. That's a whole nother different level of the anointing that we know nothing about. And every time I mounted the platform for those three days, I prayed that God would just give me what these people had for him. Because it was an unusual experience. I, Next week, I'll probably be able to show you more. Um, my passion for Kenya um, 
one of the main things that's really needed there is running water and, and uh, their um, wells was uh, $15,000 a well and we were able to um, have a well dug. Amen. And it was in the bishop that invited me said that it was in the poorest part of Kenya and they were singing that they only had running water that they can just kind of put in reverse some of the bacteria that was there. And so one of the Bonham Ministries was instrumental in putting a well in the poorest area of Kenya. So now they can start building. Amen. Amen. So once you dig this well, you don't ever have to dig again. So they can actually, um, we, um, it cost about uh, $25,000 to build a, a church that seats 5,000 people in Kenya. And so my heart's desire is the area that I dug the well in, there is no standing buildings, there's just straw huts. And so my, my passion and my mission since I've returned is going to be to build um, a project housing in that entire area where we dug the well so that the people, amen somebody. So $25,000 can build a church that seats about 5,000 people and about $5,000 can build about a four apartment hut across so it would be a project type of housing so that they can come off of the ground and out of the dirt. And now that we've dug the well, they can run the water line through all of those apartment buildings. Amen, somebody? Oh, y'all ought to bless God. We it was I brought a, 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 a DVD back. Um, my, they took some others that had a little better sound, but I just wanted to get a chance to just show you a little clipping. And next week we'll have the, a little presentation patched together so you can see that your sewing helped us to bless the people of God and every person in here that sowed your seed to help me to go to Africa. You just don't know how that blessed my heart to see um, what God had done. And when I tell you that it's never happened before, the second thing that had never happened before in the whole history of Kenya, this was the first time now for them, the the meeting was done in a park and they had to have the sound system and the lights and all that stuff out there. And it was eight million uh, shillings, which was eight million dollars to them in comparison to us. But in our money, it was a hundred thousand dollars. And for the first time in the history of Kenya, not only did the people of God call for me to come, but they sold shillings and paid for the entire crusade. The first time in the history of Kenya that they paid. Oh, you don't, you should have saw the people bringing their little shillings. And not only did they, not only did they meet the budget, they went over the budget. It ain't never happened before. And they screamed and they shouted because they've never been able to do that ever, ever. They've never been able to do anything like that. Any other person that's come over, they've paid for the whole thing. They paid for the crusade. They paid for it. This time they said, no, we are going to make a stand and this is our year. And if God permits the prophet to come to us, we will not let a prophet come to our nation and not give a seed.
they paid for the budget with money left over and for the first time in the history of Kenya they said to prophetess Bynum you take it we have thirty thousand dollars left over you take it for your ministry because Americans come over here and they sold to us and they go back blessed and we found out the reason why our nation is not blessed because we don't sow into a ministry for the first time for the first time so we're making plans to start our building project and put that money back into Kenya. That's awesome. Y'all, that's awesome. That is absolutely, that is absolutely awesome. And they were just honored and I tried, people of God, I tried to take food and, and, and everything that I tried to do is like the, the, the people that promised me they were going to do things, they, they dropped out and didn't do it. People that promised me they was going to give me food to take, failed. People that promised me they was going to help me with blankets and stuff, didn't happen. And I said, God, what is this? And the Lord gave me the scripture in the book of Acts, the third chapter, when Peter and John met the man that was at the gate of beautiful. And he said, you tell the people in Kenya that silver and gold have you not but such as you have, give out unto thee, not walk. And when I said that, they'll tell you. The place just exploded. When the Holy Ghost starts shouting, walk, 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 they just, it was as if, and when I said to them, did I bring you food? And they shouted, no. And when I said, what I brought you is the power to get up out of your state and stop letting America tell you that you are a dying nation. But you are a roaring lion and you're the lion of the tribe of Judah and I command you to get up and roar. And God sent the place up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I told them, I said, America has as many problems as you do. We got people dying of diseases just like you. Don't let anybody isolate you and make you think because you have an AIDS epidemic. I said, you don't have an epidemic of AIDS. That's not what's killing this nation. The lack of prayer is. And God commands you to get up and walk. By next Tuesday, I'll begin to show you the, the response and the reaction. But if they got this, that little clipping, are they ready? You, you ready back there? Just. This is when I first. I don't know what's going on with it. Okay. I guess they'll figure it out in a minute. This was when I, this was Sunday. They can get it to work. Kind of getting two pictures here. Where do we go? From here. They're still working on it. Okay, he's gonna. This was Sunday afternoon, the last day. When um, he's running, he's running around in there. So we hoping that he can. He's really running around there like a rabbit. I mean, really. <laughs> this is this. If if he's able to show it, this is Sunday. Near the end, uh oh, the beginning of the. When I got up, um, it played on my computer just fine. <laughs> so I don't know why the devil don't want y'all to see it, but <laughs> it played on my computer perfectly fine. <laughs> so I guess I, 
Oh, he running again. God bless that boy. He gonna have a, he is really. And while he's doing that, why don't we get our faith walkers see together? How many people enjoy Prophet Jones? He's my son. He's been in 5 a.m. prayer with me almost since the beginning that I started. And um, God is truly birthing him out to be somebody great in the kingdom. He's something, ain't he? Like an old man in God. He's something, he's something. He's, he's, he's something to be reckoned with. And I, I, I said, you know, I, I was wondering about you guys. And you know, some places over there... The phones wasn't working and, you know, I got in the airport last night and I was trying to eat up the whole airport. <laughs> Everybody was like, you done lost weight. I said, I cannot wait. I got back. I went to the McDonald counter. I went to the burrito counter. I went to the pizza counter. I'm telling you, I was eating everything last night. I was drinking. Give me some more French fries. Give me some. Y'all. <laughs> it's my one, when I got to Africa, my spirit was so much it was just moving till I, I really didn't have time to eat and then when I would sit down to eat you know and, and the things that they had prepared I'd be like oh. so you have to pretend like you're kind of eating you take the fork and put it in your mouth and say huh and then you sit it down in another place in your plate so when they look it looked like everything is scattered all out and we took some uh, Roman noodles and all of that, and they fussed me out in the grocery store. And I'm like, you don't need to be bringing all that stuff. You need to be bringing... And we got over there, and two days into Africa, all my Roman noodles was gone. All my potato chips was gone. All my cookies was gone. I had nothing. All I had left was a jar of peanut butter that I guarded with my life. And they were scavenging for that. So I had to order croissants from downstairs in the hotel and live off peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Then after a while, after the fourth day, I just said, I can't eat no more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So I started living off of coffee. I couldn't drink no more coffee. Then we got to London, and the food in the hotel there wasn't that good. And I just said, God, get me back to America. And I got off the plane of eating menagerie. Burger King, McDonald's, <laughs> double cheeseburger. <laughs> I said, Proverbs, you done lost weight. I said, I intend to gain every pound back in the next week. <laughs> so I'm going to have to eat myself up before I can. And then I rode back on British Airlines, and they was just coming off. They strike, come giving you a little voucher. Tell me, we, can't, we ain't got much to serve you. I could have just jumped on that lady when she kept bringing me... <laughs> I said, I looked at her like, do you know that I have been starving almost? And all you got to offer me is some fruit and some little bitty scone things. And for nine and a half hours, I got off that plane ready. And they got hung up in customs with their tickets. And I said, I tell y'all what, I'll meet y'all at the gate. Because I got to go find me a hot dog or something. My mother was like, you ain't going to give me no hug goodbye. I said, mama, I got to go eat. I'll holler at y'all later. You going to... Get your cab or whoever waiting on you. I'm going this way. So Benita said, you going by yourself? Big one. Tell me, you going by yourself? I'll go with you, prophetess. <laughs> Benita, that's my big girl. She went with me. She said, I'm going with you. Catherine and, and, and Madge was doing something. I said, we going to eat. By the time they got over there, I had ordered everything. I told the people, put extra meat on my burrito, put extra cheese, extra beans, extra rice. Give me guacamole, give me sour cream, give me all of it. I stepped to the next counter, give me a double cheeseburger, a super-sized fry. And I got back to the table, yelled back to Benita and said, bring me another order of fries. And then Madge walked up, I said, go get me some pizza. 
said, Prophet, you're going to be sick. I said, that's all right, because mother is hungry. <laughs> I was so hungry, y'all. I'm telling y'all, but it, 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 it was a challenge. It, it was a, a real, real challenge, because I'm already a picky eater, and I don't eat a lot of stuff, but God got me through it. I was preaching on fumes, but he brought me through it. <laughs> Are we going to be able to make it work? Yes, no, yes, no. If not, then I'll have a perfectly great something for you next week. It'd be a little something. Yes. She she, she's shaking her head, no. Is that a no? Okay, well then what I'll do is, if you can get my computer for me and I'll put it right there and I'll let them see um, one of the pictures that we took of um, so as people march around and give your your faith seat offering today you can just glance at the photo in the um, in the picture but I just thank you guys so much I mean you don't know you 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 made my heart glad You sent me away right. You, 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 you helped us to establish something in the kingdom. And so the, um, I'm, I'm now uh, preparing myself because, of course, I wanted to get a chance to tell you this, that the last Tuesday of this month would be our last prayer Tuesday. Would be, <laughs> would be our and some of, them, some of them didn't say all oh, because they look like that is not the truth. Some of y'all have an acceptance problem. I saw it in your face. It was looking like, okay, no, God going to say something else. God going to say something else. But it would be our last Tuesday. And, um, and so my, my, my goal is we're um, in the process of um, making preparations for our second well. And I would like to uh, have them to dig a well uh, for our prayer group here in Kansas City. And what they have, amen, amen, amen. So the next couple of weeks, what I plan to do uh, the next couple of weeks is uh, whatever uh, offerings come in, wherever we are shy, if we're shy of the $15,000, I will add the rest to it. And I would like for them to dig a well on behalf of the 5 a.m. prayer group in Kansas City. Amen, somebody. Amen. We're going to be represented. And what they're doing is they're putting brass markings. So if you ever get a chance to go to Kenya, and um, you can ask about the well, and they will be able to go and find where uh, the Kansas City 5 a.m. prayer dug their well for Kenya. Amen, somebody? That's awesome. That's awesome. I want every faith walker to come now <clears throat> because I tell you, it's nothing greater than having purpose, nothing stronger than having purpose. And I want to thank you for your seed because it cost us about $125,000 to go in plane tickets. And um, you guys... Your seed just helped us to go, and we, we didn't go as a struggling ministry. We went and we represented God well, and that's because of what you've done. Thank you so much. I appreciate every faith walker. It's a person that's made a decision that every Tuesday, God can use my finances. Every Tuesday, I've earmarked it because it's not something that's going to last always. It's a season that the Lord has brought us into. Every faith walker that's going to give that $100 seed, stand in the middle aisle. If you're going to give the faith seed of $50, please get in the far right aisles. If you're going to give your faith seed of $20, if you're going to give your faith seed of $10, what is a faith seed? A faith seed is a seed that you didn't plan to give. It'll hurt you to give it. But nevertheless, this is your sacrifice. And I appreciate the fact that we don't, have to beg and plead that we just got people that are just willing to obey God and I'm asking you before you leave today 
If you have not gotten your t-shirt, I would appreciate that the last day of this meeting, if everybody would be able to wear their t-shirt. This would be my final pictures. This would be my final photographs of the prayer. I'm going to be flying in a photographer on that last day because I want to keep this in my memoir. You all have the brown ones. And when we went to Africa, the, the, the prayer print was the same, but it was green. It was Kelly green. So that was really, really refreshing to see our t-shirts, our uh, intercessors that went with me to Africa. They wore them. And so everywhere the Lord would send me, he's going to give me a break for a little while and he will be sending me someplace else to do the 5 a.m. prayer. I know he is. And so every state that he sent me to in every prayer would be a different color. So this white t-shirts with the brown would be your color for Kansas City. And I'm asking that everybody will get your t-shirt because this is our memory. This is something that we did. This was our covenant. This was something that we went through for these weeks. This was something that we'll be able to live to talk about. Amen, somebody. We'll be able to tell our grandkids about it. We'll be able to testify that when the Lord called Kansas City to prayer, we held it down and we obeyed God. Amen, somebody. The Spirit of the Lord said, when we get with our backs up against the wall, he said, put me in remembrance of my word. And you'll be able to go and get that t-shirt and say, God, I was faithful. And I remember the word of the Lord that says no more vain visions and no more empty and fruitless promises. If you spoke it, you're going to bring it to pass. You're going to make it good. Because when you called me, I answered the call to prayer. Oh, somebody ought to bless God for that. That don't excite anybody the way it excites me, but it, it excites me for the Lord to choose me and call me to prayer. And I answer him with a yes and obey him. I want to make mention and put this on your calendar that April the 5th through the 8th, we will be doing the International Threshing Floor Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. And the registration, and I, the Lord had me to make it minimum because I've said all the time that I believe that people don't pray, not because they don't want to, it's because they don't know how. And anything that intimidates you, you stay away from. And so I believe the Lord has called me to do this conference because he said it's time for revival. He said it is time for the refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. And so the Lord has given me in my spirit to design this conference so that it's nonstop God. If the Lord wants to have his way just like he did today, you know, every speaker that will be invited to speak will be told, if the power of God takes over, please forgive us. We're going to give you your honorarium, but the purpose of this conference is not so much as the structure, but the presence of the Lord. Amen, somebody. We've already gotten confirmation from Perry Stone. We've already got confirmation from Stormy O'Martin. I'm telling you, God's bringing some generals because it is time for the nation, for this nation, for this Christian nation to take back what the devil has stolen from us. It's time for us to get up and make a stand for what we believe. Amen, somebody? And when the people of God see us crying out in one place, on one accord, the Bible said when they all got together, on one accord, in one place, God came down in the midst of them. And I believe that we are going to expect a supernatural visitation from the Lord. How many believe that God want to do it for us? I believe that. So I'm especially, I'm especially asking everybody from the prayer group, if you would make that your plans, if you got seven or eight months to, to get your, your, I think the registration is only $40, but make that your plans and make that your, your time that we're going to come together and we're going to touch God for our nation. And this, I'm telling you, it, it's, it, it's going to be something awesome because the Lord has shown it to me. I'm birthing it out on the threshing floor. He's revealing it to me that, you know, we have many conferences. We have many conferences, but it is time for that refreshing to come from the presence of the Lord. Because if you just have scripture, scripture, scripture and no presence. If you just have faith, 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 faith and no presence. Then you're missing the essence of what God desires. And many people don't understand the presence. They don't know how to operate in the presence. And you know, you've you, you got places where people start worshiping God for five minutes and then they cut it off. And cut down the spirit and shut down the spirit. 
But we want people to come into that place and know that when they walked in that auditorium, they've walked into an international threshing floor. And we're expecting God to do what? Whatever God wants to do. Amen, somebody. So make it your plans April the 5th through the 8th to register. And you can register online or you can call our office and register. And we're making preparations. I'm, I, I will be mentioning it globally for the first time tonight on TBN. I said, I'm, my schedule, I told my staff, I said, if God ain't told us to do this, we just stupid. <laughs> All up and down on planes and flying 14 hours to come back to a 5 a.m. prayer and then leaving 5 a.m. prayer to fly to Atlanta to go sit on TBN and do the show tonight. I said, you know, it'll be something if I got to heaven and God said, I ain't paying you for none of that because I ain't told you to be nothing but an usher. <laughs> you were just running all around the nation hollering and preaching. <laughs> he only pay you for what he called you to do. Amen, somebody. Everything else is volunteer work. <laughs> and I told him, I said, wouldn't it be awful if I got to heaven? And he said, I said, God, I'm ready for my crown. He said, Boo, you ain't got one because I ain't. You, you did a wonderful job though, but I ain't told you to do nothing there. I just called you to be an usher and you just got happy and just started preaching all over the nation and running prayer meetings and flying and doing television and all that. And you were never supposed to be nothing but a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. That'd be pitiful, wouldn't it? And I said, if God ain't told us to do all this, then we is just stupid all over the country. Talking about, I said, if we looked up one day and just somebody tell me, it ain't no Jesus, we would just be crazy, wouldn't we? Just, just running all over the country, hallelujah, just no voice, back hurting, legs hurting, sweating, tired, weary, and for what? God ain't told you to do that. So I just pray that he told us to do this. I, I believe he done told us to do it. And if he haven't, I have had a great time being crazy. <laughs> My level of insanity has been a wonderful experience for me. <laughs> Amen. Come on, lift that seat up to the Lord. All over the building, lift it up to the Lord. I'm so happy to be back here. Lift it up to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, and we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for every faith walker. We thank you for every person in this room. Father, I don't care if they have a nickel. I don't care if they have two pennies. If they trust you with it, it's like bringing to you the widow's might. And so we thank you because every seed changes a life. We thank you, Lord, that these people were found worthy and that you can trust them to release to them seed because you know that they would release seed back to you. And now I pray that you bless it and you multiply it and you open up a window of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they won't have room to receive. Father, I pray that you would do it and that you would make manifest your scripture in Ezekiel today. That no more fruitless promises. No more vain prophecies. That you have spoken it and you shall perform it. And Father I thank you. I thank you for this new anointing that we're under. The anointing that says this ain't never happened before. And we thank you for that spirit that's hovering over every last one of us. We thank you because every last one of us is going to experience that anointing. That it ain't never happened before. Because you said in your word. That when we line up with you in our spirits. That you would do exceedingly and abundant and above. All we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. And so we thank you for victory. We thank you for a real manifestation of your glory. In Jesus mighty name. Let the people of God say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Give me a half a second to pull this up. Matter of fact, if you don't mind, you can stand here with this. It'll be easy if you stood here with it. You got the wrong frame up here. Uh, half a second. You must have pulled up every picture you knew. I 
present. This is it. No limit. No boundaries. Here it is. I see it. Okay, you can come now. All around me, stretch forth. Break forth. Enlarge my territory. No limits. No boundaries. I see increase. All around me stretch forth. You can learn it because it's a simple song. Break forth, enlarge my territory. Same thing. Da da da. Da da da. da. Good. I see it increase. Don't click. All around me stretch forth. Break forth, enlarge my territory no limits and no boundaries I see increase all around you look up on the screen you can see it break forth enlarge my territory no limits and no boundaries well I see increase it's all around me, stretch forth, break forth, enlarge my territory, no limits, and no boundaries. Okay, you can look up I on the screen now. All around me, stretch one forth. Photo. Here's no another one. Boundaries. Well, I see it. Well, all around me, break forth. There's another photo. And as you look, you can't see it, but on the platform that I'm standing on, all the way around in a circle, the platform, there's many people as you see out here, is behind me on the opposite side of the platform, completely all the way around in a circle. You see that top of the hill where you see the headset, it goes all the way up the top of that hill and back out into the streets. If you go to our website tonight, after TBN um, comes on, we'll have about 30 or 40 photos that will be on the website, JuanitaBynum.com tonight, and you'll be able to see the rest of the um, photos from Africa. And um, it, was, it was an experience. The people are actually standing up, and there was no seats, no chairs, so they just sat on the grass, but the entire time I preached, they stood the whole time. I had to actually make them sit down. It was, it was just, I can't even explain that, that moment. And next week, I'll have some clippings on the video to show you some of the defining moments 
in Africa because we had some defining moments that was just an unbelievable testimony. September, she, she was correcting me, the last Tuesday in September would be the last prayer, okay? The last Tuesday of September, because she says, sweetheart, this is the last Tuesday of the month. <laughs> she was straightening me out. And I'll be doing TBN tonight, the show will air tonight. It's going to be powerful. song. 